Shalom Bracha from Yerushalayim. My name is Joey Harari. I am a Brooklyn-born community member who, together with my wife Katie, had the zikhut of coming to Israel and making Aliyah to Yerushalayim about 20 years ago. In this series of Minahag of the Week, you'll be hearing from me, Be'azrat Hashem, about Minahagim dealing with Tefillah Betzibur, the daily prayers in our synagogue. The plan is to begin with the weekdays, go on to Shabbat, and the rest of the holidays. Before I begin actual content, we're going to have a little bit of an introduction I feel is necessary. In our joint introductory remarks when we started this project, uh, Joey Morris and I spoke about the importance of the minhagim, the halachic uh, obligation to, to maintain them, the social, the cultural, even the emotional benefits of uh, knowing that we belong to a global community of halabiyyeh, uh, who for over a thousand years developed customs that were meticulously and zealously maintained by our Chachamim, our Gabbaim, our Laymen. You know, it's amazing. Um, I'm sitting here in Kinis Adis in Yerushalayim. And uh, when we made Aliyah, we came to Yerushalayim, we saw Kinis Halabiyyeh. And because of our the points we put on keeping Amin Hagim, I could come here and after 40 years of being in Brooklyn, I come to a new synagogue, seamless transition, instantly feel at home and pray exactly the same way I was praying all my entire life. Customs evolve. No community is 100% homogenous in their practices. The Halab community in particular went through a couple of events in their history, went through many events in their history, but a couple in particular that had a very big impact on our customs. Two major factors changed our Siddur forever. One was the influx in the late 15th century of significant amount of Jews who were expelled from Spain and came to Halab armed with a rich and proud tradition and pew team and, and, and uh, uh, prayers and they weren't so keen on letting go of those customs so quickly and that was one of the reasons. The other factor that changed now Sidur was in the 16th century, the rise and the spreading of the Kabbalistic uh, thought, which was uh, be, which began in Safed by Rabbi Ishaq Luria Ashkenazi, Ari. And this spread of this Kabbalah spread to many, many communities, altered the practices and the Nusha'ot and the Tefillot, and that's something we have to keep in mind. I'm holding in my hand Mahzur Aram Soba, published originally in Venice in 1527. We go through the Sidur and Mahzur, and it hardly resembles the Sidurim that we use today. This was generally the Nosah, the prayers of the Musta'aravim, the local Halabiyah before the uh, Sfaradim came. Besides being very interesting, rich in content and PU team, it's a valuable reference tool and it helps us understand some of the Minhagim that we have today. The purpose of this series will be simply to let you know our community's customs. I remember when I was growing up, as long as I remember about 50 years ago, we went to synagogues. And when I mention a minhag, when I go through minhagim, if I mention a specific minhag, it's only because other communities do it differently. Now, you may, a lot of what I say may be obvious, and you're gonna say, you react and say, well, what's, what's the hidush? But that's precisely the point. It may be common practice today. Our hope is to preserve them. So 50 years, 100 years from now, Things won't be uh, changing and we won't be having outside influences alter what we do and we can always go back and see how it was done. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is because we see practices today, I see things today in Brooklyn which are different than how they were done 50 years ago. So that's why we are here. See you next time. Shalom Bracha.